YouTube, what is good? So please ignore two things. One, we're recording on an iPhone today because I am in New York City right now. Check it out, that view is pretty sick right there. And also ignore the fact that the setup for this video is not the normal setup. I wasn't expecting to make it, but right before I left Atlanta, pause. The reason I'm in New York right now is because I'm doing street photography stuff for the YouTube channel as well as a workshop that I have coming out. But right before I left Atlanta, I got this exciting email from my friends at Luminar. They told me they have some new software coming out called Luminar Neo and they wanted me to try it out and send them feedback. And they also wanted to see y'all's feedback in the comments. So if you watch this video and you see something that you think could be improved on, let me know in the comments. They're going to read them and they're going to make the software better and more of what people want. Now, the reason I like Luminar as a company and why I've talked about them before on the channel is because years ago when I started photography I had the worst editing software on the planet it was all I could afford and now Luminar provides a budget-friendly option for people getting started with photography to where they don't have to pay a subscription and all this money to start editing and start learning you can get all these powerful tools for a much more budget-friendly price so that's one thing I love about Luminar but the second thing I love about them and this new Luminar Neo program just like takes it to the next level is the AI technology that they have in their programs. You see Luminar got really popular for their sky replacement features, which I've talked about before. I'll show you again in today's video, but now they've added new technology that we're seeing in smartphones and taking it to real cameras. You see this camera right here can't do everything my iPhone can do because my iPhone utilizes software. Basically it does computational photography where it takes the highlights, the shadows, makes multiple images and puts it together. That is not possible with a normal camera. We all know you make one file. But now with Luminar AI, you can take the photos in your camera and take advantage of the same technology we're seeing in phones. It's very exciting, it's really cool stuff. And like I said, it's great for beginners because it allows you to have access to all this for much more budget friendly price. So let's jump in the computer. I'm excited to try this out and demo it with y'all. Let me show you what I can come up with using Luminar Neo. Hope you guys enjoy it and get some value from it. Let's jump into this demo. So the first feature I want to show you with Luminar is arguably what they're most famous for, and it's their AI sky replacement. So AI, artificial intelligence, goes in and masks over the sky in your image for you, and you can add in a variety of different skies to completely transform your image. I mean, it's insane what this software can do. Check this out. I mean, how amazing does that look right there? So you can go through and pick from a variety of ones that come with the software. They also have ones that you can download. I think I'm going to go with this one right here. That looks fantastic and once you find one that you like you can also edit the position of it if you need to so maybe we want to raise it up just a little bit I think that looks good and we also have the option to go in and do some refinement on our masking so if you see some errors or you think that this could be tightened up you can always slide the fixed detail and the closed gap uh, adjustments up and then we have our scene relighting also relight is a new feature we're going to talk about in a minute but we can add some strength to this relight and look what it does to that sky up there really makes it pop we can add some saturation in there as well and I think that looks fantastic and if we want we can drop down to some of the more familiar tools in Luminar like the glow effect and we can add maybe some slight soft focus in there just to add to that drama and then maybe if we want we can jump into our vignette on our basic adjustments add a little bit of vignette in on here as well and I think that looks awesome so something really cool that's been added to Luminar as a software is this ability to remove power lines automatically so what we do is we click on enhance right here and we just click remove power lines and the AI goes in and does it for us so there we go check that out it got rid of most of them so what we can do now is we can go ahead and zoom in here and we can just click on that and highlight it click erase got rid of it and now down here it looks like there's a little bit left so we're gonna highlight that as well go ahead click erase Boom, check that out, we got rid of those. And now we have some dust spots up here as well. So if we wanna test another new feature called remove dust spots, we can see if it gets rid of these. So we'll click on that. Dang, check that out, it got rid of those dust spots for us as well. So if we wanna edit this image real quick, what we could do is we could go and develop, we can raise up our exposure a little bit here. Now one thing that I like to do on this image is I'm gonna raise the exposure, but then I'm gonna go into our relight feature down here, and I'm actually gonna darken up what is in 
in front of us. As we bring this down, you can see that the front of our image is darkening up, which is allowing that shadowy figure crossing the street to stand out a little bit more. And then we can change the depth on this as well, so I can push it up a little bit closer to that subject right there. Now, one other cool thing we could do on this photo potentially is drop into our sun rays feature. So what you can do is click on sun rays, click on place the sun center, which in this photo, you can see the sun is right over here. So if we add that in and then let's drop in a certain amount of sun. Obviously you can go crazy if you want, but we do not want to do that. We want this to be a little bit more subtle. We can change the overall look of it. I think dropping it down a little bit. You can change the length of the sun rays if you want. I think right about there looks good. You can change how big the sun ray is. I think that looks solid. You have all these settings down here that you can customize, but for now we'll go ahead and keep it simple. And I think that looks good and adds a little bit of something extra to the photo with this AI. And obviously you could go through here and you could add in a bunch of edits as well and really customize this. Use the masking feature to make that subject stand out more. But let's move on to the next one. So Luminar added a really cool feature for portraits that I think is a game changer and allows you to mimic the look of your cell phone with a real camera. So an iPhone does something called computational photography where essentially it makes an image of the background, makes an image of the subject, and then software puts it together. Obviously your real camera can't do that. I actually talked about that in a video recently. But what this Relight AI allows you to do is it allows you to change the brightness of the near and far side of the image and then adjust the depth. So what we can do here is we want to darken up this backdrop. Obviously the backdrop is very, very bright on this image. So what we're going to do is bring that down and we're going to bring the brightness on the near up. Up. And this is where the AI kicks in. Notice how it identifies me as the subject and brightens me up. This is a massive tool for portraits and it's something that <laughs> I'm really glad is here because it's something that we haven't had before because normally you'd have to go in and mask this yourself in other programs. So you can also adjust the depth here if you want it to go a little bit farther behind the subject or you want it to come right here like that. This is a major, major improvement to this Luminar software and a feature that I think a lot of people are going to get quite a bit of use out of and it speeds up the editing process dramatically compared to the old mask and layer method of doing something like this. One of my favorite features of Luminar is the fact that you can do so many different things in one program that typically would take two programs. If you follow my editing workflow in other tutorials I've done, you know that typically I do my developmental and basic adjustment edits in one program and then I move to my more technical and color correction edits in another program. So that's what's really great about Luminar is we can make some adjustments up here and kind of get our photo to a point that we like. We can add some vignette in here if we want. Let's drop a little bit of that right there. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we can drop down here to mood, which normally we'd have to move into another program. And we can pick from a variety of different LUTs that are built in here and also LUTs that we might have on our computer. So let's see, we got Grace, that looks pretty cool. Red Trance looks pretty cool. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll stick with, I don't know, let's pick one of these just to, <laughs> there's so many different options. Let's just go ahead and pick one. We'll do this one, 1990. So with this, you can also adjust the contrast on the LUT and you can also adjust the saturation on the LUT as well as the amount. So we're gonna go pretty conservative on this one. We're gonna jump into our relight right here though and we're gonna go ahead and bring up some brightness on our face. So brightness, we'll go ahead and bring the brightness far down and the brightness near, we're gonna go ahead and bring that up. I think that looks great right there. We'll go ahead and leave that. And if we want, we can actually mask in this. So we are going to mask me right here because that's the main adjustment that I want that to affect. Let's check this out, boom. Look at that. So that lighting adjustment now only affects me, the subject, and we can go down to these more professional settings here. And like I said, if you follow my workflow normally, you know that I typically do a color a color balance adjustment to color correct my images in a separate program. So what we can do here is we can make these color balance adjustments right here to do our final color calibration. I think this is looking good move our midtones around now and this is really cool that all these things are in one program and that's why I recommend it definitely to most beginners out there because you're getting the power of multiple programs all in one and it's a great way to learn and also establish an editing workflow if you're someone who doesn't want to dive into multiple programs and learn all the different things at once this really has everything that you need also if we wanted to edit my skin on this we could jump into these skin uh, portrait AI tools that we have right here, but I talked about those in the last video I did with Luminar, so we'll go ahead and skip over that. 
So now let's go ahead and bring all this together and just edit through one image using all these amazing tools that Luminar has to offer. So first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and crop this image. There are AI options for cropping, so you can click it and just see what the AI does. But I think with this one, I'm gonna customize it myself and do a one-to-one -one square. So I think this is a good crop. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit more. There we go. We really just want to focus on the buildings and this amazing sunset that we have happening. So that looks pretty good. We are going to go ahead and jump now down into our vignette. We're going to add just a slight bit onto this image right here. That looks good. Let's go back up to our develop right here and we are going to add in just a little bit of smart contrast. We're going to bring our shadows down just a little bit, maybe bring our highlights up add in a little bit of warmth here that looks good and we'll go ahead and add in some vibrance and a little bit of saturation maybe we'll add some luminance here just to do some noise reduction a little bit of color as well that looks good now let's jump to our ai enhance right here the sky enhance slider we can slide this up and it's really going to make our sky pop we're going to bring that to around right there and let's check this ascent i'm not going to go too crazy with this let's check our before and after yeah, I think that adds just a little bit of something extra to that sky right there. We have a bunch of different landscape features here. You can do dehaze if you want. We can add a little bit of dehaze in there and we can add some golden hour effect, which is gonna affect all the tones that commonly would be in golden hour. I think that looks great as well. Another solid adjustment. And we can jump down to our atmosphere right here if we want. We could add in some mist and some haze. I don't know if I wanna add this in necessarily. We'll go ahead and skip that for today, but it is a feature that some people might wanna check out, especially if you have maybe more of a rainy day type photo. Let's go ahead and check our dramatic right here and see how this looks. And I'm gonna skip over dramatic today. That one's not necessarily for me. I do want to drop in a LUT though. Let's see what our LUT options are. That Riverside, that looks really good actually right away. So we'll go ahead and stick with that. Bring the contrast down on it a little bit and maybe bring the saturation up just slightly. Toning, if we want to split tone this image, we can, which is something I do pretty often. A lot of times I like to add a little bit of uh, red hues into my shadows. So let's do that right here. Check our before and after. I think that looks really good, just a kind of a subtle edit. Now we can drop down to our glow. If we want to add in soft focus or an effect, we're going to add just a little bit of this in here. I don't want to go too crazy and go overboard because as you can see, it's a very big adjustment, but I do think that looks pretty cool. And last but not least, we can go to our color harmony sliders down here and do those color balance adjustments that I was talking about earlier. Let's go ahead and slide these over a little bit like this. There we go. Keep moving these around around just a little bit more. I'm really liking the way this looks. I am gonna go back into our uh, basic adjustments though and I'm gonna make a few more changes here. So I think that looks pretty good. We could always fine tune it, but we'll mess with that later. Let's jump back to develop right here and I'm gonna bring my highlights down a little bit on this. That is looking cool. We can add in maybe a little bit more smart contrast if we want, but for now we'll go ahead and call that done. So let's jump over here to the edits tab and let's see what this looks like as a before and after. That looks good. Close this out. We can go through and we can check each one of these and we can decide like, oh, maybe I don't like the way that ended up looking. So one last thing we can do is we can jump down to this super contrast tab right here. And if you notice the highlights are a little bit harsh right here. So what we can do is slide our highlight contrast up. And what this is gonna do is soften up our highlights right here. We can also slide around our highlight balance, maybe adjust those a little bit. And I think that evens out this photo a lot and really helps this sky look good. We can do the exact same thing to our mid-tones and to our shadows, but I actually don't think either of those really need it. Maybe a little bit to our shadow contrast just to flatten things out. Check out how big of a difference that makes to our image. I think that looks amazing and is it going to be a vastly underutilized tool by people who are using Luminar. You definitely want to pay attention to this super contrast and to this color harmony. So after we finish with that, we could jump into color right here and we could make some final color adjustments. I'm not a huge fan of this yellow right here, so I 
I could switch this yellow hue maybe a little bit more towards the orange side and I think that really balances this sky out and that personally to me looks fantastic so we can go ahead and hit file export here and send this photo out to post on social media or share it wherever we want and there you have it like I said this is something that I wish I had eight years ago when I started photography my editing probably would have improved a lot faster than it did you know like the fact that this thing has all these LUTs built into it is just one thing alone that provides a lot of value and then all the AI and the other things you can do if you're someone who is just getting into photography or someone who's a little bit more seasoned and wants a plug-in that can go with your other software this is definitely something you want to check out so go to the link in the description down below you can get more information on it thank you to Luminar Neo for sponsoring today's video and allowing me to give you feedback on this there was a few things that I did not like about the program that I'm going to email them and talk to them about privately so drop your comments and let me know your thoughts thumbs up subscribe if you're not yet and stay tuned for all this awesome New York content that I have coming your way in the next couple weeks. See you guys later.